Hi, my name's Aaron, and I'm a developer advocate at Couchbase. I'm pretty excited about Couchbase server release 7.1 Codename Neo. It combines the strength of relationship databases with the flexibility, performance, and scale of Couchbase. This release has over 16 new features and enhancements. Wait, over 16 new features and enhancements? No, that's right. Most companies would release this as a full release. However, at Couchbase, we're releasing it as an upgrade. I've been testing Neo for several months, and I'm very excited that you could now take advantage of these new features and enhancements to turbocharge your projects. To celebrate this release, I would like to share with you my top five favorite features and enhancements in Couchbase Server Release 7.1, Codename Neo. Let's get started. For those that know me, my first pick should be no surprise. It's ARM64 V8 processor support. I know a lot of developers have been asking for this since Apple dropped its new Macs based on ARM64 V8 processors, the M1. I'm excited to report that we have images out on Docker Hub for both Community Edition and Enterprise Edition. Go get those downloads for you M1 users that are looking for that support. Now, our ARM story doesn't stop there. We now also have support in AWS for Amazon's best processor when you look at it from performance to watt power use ratios. When you look at that, the Graviton 2 CPU is pretty amazing and we support it with Couchbase Server Release 7.1 Neo. How cool is that? So that's a massive amount of savings that you can see using these processors. Now, you'd think our ARM story stops there, but it doesn't. We also have support for small embedded devices based on the ARM 64 V8 processor, such as the Raspberry Pi. Now think about that for a second. You can run Couchbase cluster, get three Raspberry Pis, fours, and put Couchbase server on them and run them as a cluster and it can just sit right on your desk. How cool is that? That is just amazing for embedded developers. Next on my favorite list is the Magma Storage Engine. Magma is designed from the ground up for enterprise customers needing high performance with vast data sets. How vast, you ask? With Magma, you now have a whopping 10 terabytes of data per node. 10 terabytes is an insane amount of storage. Plus, Magma is designed to work with low amounts of memory. Now, I know this all kind of sounds nerdy and kind of confusing. Let me give you some examples. Let's say, for example, a development team is using one terabyte of data per node and has a hundred servers to meet their requirements. That same team could run the same workload on 10 servers with Magma Storage Engine. That's 10 times fewer servers required, all with faster throughput for disk access thanks to Magma. Now, I should remind you that Magma is a disk-based engine. The performance will be as good as the underlying disk subsystem. Thus, development teams using latest SSD technology such as NVMe would see higher performance than customers using older spinning disk technology. The best of all, the storage engine selection is bucket level. This means you can mix and match buckets in your couch store with existing storage engine and magma on the same cluster, such giving you maximum flexibility. I highly recommend development teams start looking at using Magma and fire up some POCs as it is a game changer. A quick reminder, this is an enterprise only feature. Third on my list is enhancements made to the query service that make life easier for SQL++ developers. For example, prior to 7.1, the query engine cost-based optimizer could not rewrite queries to use the optimal join order. Instead, joins were performed in the order that specified in the query. In 7.1, the cost-based optimizer may consider different join order and choose the optimal join based on the cost information it has available. Now, also for developers who like to tweak things for extreme levels of performance, you can now use the optimizer hints to override the cost-based optimizer and specify that that query should use a specific index join method, join orders, and so on. Fourth on my list, for those who keep tracking at home, is improvements to user-defined functions. User-defined functions are one of the best kept secrets in Couchbase Server. For those new to user-defined functions, they allow developers to write functions in JavaScript 
which according to Stack Overflow is the most popular programming language on the planet. If you think that sounds a lot like store procedures, you're right. This new release supports for embedded SQL++ statements. You can now add JavaScript libraries and functions through the query tool and administration console. Life got a lot easier for teams looking to migrate legacy systems based on relationship database management systems with lots of store procedures. My fifth and final pick, wait for it, Kotlin developers. Fire up your IDDs and get ready to upgrade your Gradle file because it's support for Kotlin with the new Kotlin SDK. With this release, the documentation and SDK team has really knocked it out of the park. Over the past few years, Kotlin has found a very special place in my heart, and I am really excited to announce support for Kotlin JVM and Kotlin developers to enjoy this rich SDK with support for language-specific features. There you have it, my top five fave new favorite features and enhancements for Couchbase Server Release 7.1 Neo. I wanna thank you for joining me. And if you enjoyed this content, you should check out our monthly Couchbase virtual meetup that we stream on YouTube. Take care, have a great day, and stay safe. Should I pick the blue pill or the red pill? Hmm. Oh, hey, the Flintstone Vitamins. I love these. <laughs>